And in this video, we've got these Mercedes seats that need to be restored. As you can see here, it's got a, a, a few things that are wrong with it. Um, starters, you know, uh, the, the bolster's scuffed. The base of the seat uh, is also scuffed. So I'd imagine um, these are quite low seats. So getting in and out of the car over time has just caused quite a lot of damage on the bolster here and also on the base of the seat. Um, but apart from that, there's a lot of die transfer all across the back of the seat. This side bolster here, there's a lot of dye from clothing that's just transferred over time. Uh, and to add to all of that, we've also got contrast stitching, which means it's not gonna be as simple as just spraying it on. There's gonna have to be a lot of masking. And we're gonna show you how to deal with uh, restoring seats that have contrast stitching. So uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. Right, if you've watched any of our other videos, you'll know that we break down every repair and restoration job into three simple steps. This makes it easier to remember and compartmentalize all the information. So here are the three simple steps. Step one is to prep, where we clean and we degrease. Step two is mixing the paint and doing all the filling work. And step three is the finishing stage where we spray the primer, the paint and the clear coat. Okay, so step one is the prep stage. We're gonna start by cleaning the seat thoroughly to remove all dirt that's on the surface. And in this case, we'll try to clean, clean up as much of the dye transfer as we possibly can. We'll begin by using the strong leather cleaner, which is a water-based product and the leather cleaning brush. And let's see how far that gets us. As you can see, the surface does look cleaner, but the dye stains are quite prominent and still visible. Okay, so before we go further into the video, let's talk about why standard leather cleaners don't always remove dye transfer from leather, right? Now we know that automotive leather is a painted surface, right? That's what's called pigmented leather, right? So if you're looking at the surface, here's what actually happens. This bit here, imagine that is the clear coat on top of the paint and the paint layer is actually underneath here. So your leather is sort of there, right? And you've got your clear coat here or your top coat and this here is your paint stroke pigment right now as we start using this seat dye from clothing and denim right usually starts leaving stains on here and that's sitting on top of the clear coat now if that's not dealt with straight away and if it's left to sit on there for a long period of time what this will start doing is this will start penetrating the clear coat and it'll probably be around here right that is what we've got in these particular seats right in this particular case now if you grab a standard water-based cleaner and start cleaning what you're doing is just cleaning at the top here because standard leather cleaners just don't have the strength to dissolve the clear coat so you've cleaned the top here right but all the stains that have penetrated the clear coat are still very much visible Right? And in order to remove this, we need to use a stronger solvent-based product that allows us to dissolve this clear coat very, very gently, allowing us to clean this surface, right? But in doing so, there is a slight risk that it may, this surface may have to be retouched and resprayed with a bit of paint. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing. And let's carry on with the video. So to clean and remove these stains completely, we will be using a product called the GLD Solvent Clean. When applying this product, you want to use a soft lint-free cloth and try not to scrub as the product makes the surface tacky. And because it goes tacky, I prefer not to use a microfiber as well as it tends to grab more, causing layers to peel off. So the ideal way to use this product is make sure you have enough product on the cloth, keep wiping and allow the product to do its job. Yeah. 
Right there guys, so we've done the first stage of cleaning here. We've cleaned the seats with a strong leather cleaner and the brush as you've seen. We've also cleaned the areas that were affected with the dye transfer using the GLD solvent, right? So we've seen a lot of improvement, but if you look up close, there's still quite a bit of dye transfer that is very visible on these areas, on the bolsters, on the sides here. This side's probably come out a little bit better, um, but these two panels and this bolster here, um, there's still quite a lot of transfer on there. And I think what we're gonna do is just clean it once again with the dye, uh, with the GLD solvent, just to make sure that we remove as much as, as much as possible. But in this case, it's also gonna need to be recolored because we may not be able to get rid of every stain. And, it, and because the stains are quite intensive as well, I think what we're likely gonna do is apply a layer of blocker, which literally just stops some of the dye transfer that's probably penetrated inside the leather from coming back and migrating back out. So stay tuned, let's carry on with the video. Now before we move on to the paint job, there's just one final thing left to do, and that is to use a product called a solvent cleaner to degrease the surface very well so that it's ready for our paint job. Now when it comes to covering the stitching, there are many products out in the market like special pens, tapes or peel-off markers. In this case, we used a narrow and thin masking tape, but we could have used a peel-off marker to cover the stitching and then masked over it for added protection. And in fact, that's what I'd recommend all of you guys to do. As a last stage of the prep process, we applied a dye blocker to make sure any remaining ink stains do not migrate through the paint over time. In terms of the repair work, all we did was apply a little bit of color lock leather filler on the bolster along with a couple of layers of neutral binder to make sure that we had a nice smooth surface and that it was ready to paint. Now onto the final stage of the repair, we're going to spray a thin layer of primer and then a couple of layers of paint to cover all the stained areas.
Before applying the clear coat, some sections needed sanding, a top up of the filler and some more paint. With all the defects fixed, all that was left to do was to spray two thin layers of our clear coat and the repair was done. Stitching, dye transfer, this job had a lot of tricky bits that needed proper care and attention. But I hope you guys like the final result. And if you found this video helpful, please give us a like. Help us spread the message and subscribe to our channel. And we'd also love to hear your own tips and techniques on masking and covering stitches. So go ahead and put your suggestions in the comments below and we'll see you all soon.